Hello everyone, my name is Hassan and you're welcome to Mo's Medical. Alright, so today I have another special guest and she's not that person but Anita and she goes to uh, American University of Antigua, right? So yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and you guys learned a lot from the video. Uh, mind you, the video is going to be a little bit lengthier than the other ones and that's because I feel like AU is a very unique school that has a very unique curriculum and like there are very little nuances to how AUA operates. So I delved into a lot of that in this video and as always, I've divided my videos into um, timestamps. You know, like I said, it's a pretty lengthy video so if you feel like you need to skip to a particular part that you're more interested in, feel free to go through that but I would highly recommend you sit through the video even though it's a long one because like i said um, aua has a lot of nuances and they have a very different curriculum and other differences from the typical caribbean medical school right so just sit through them you know hopefully you don't leave more confused than you came in but uh, as always i'm going to put our details into um, the description so you can feel free to just email or message her if you have any more questions after this video okay so yeah so i'm going to take it on to the interview with anita hope you enjoy Okay, hey, hi everyone. So my name is Anita Mojabe. Um, I'm a second year medical student at AUA. And um, yeah, so I'm just here today to answer questions about going to AUA. So yeah, feel free. Right. Good. So thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join me today. Um, oh, no. All right, so the first question here actually is just um, tell us more about your school. So, you know, where is AUA located? You know, what's the meaning of the full meaning of AUA? So just tell us a little bit about the school, the location. How do you hear about um, AUA and why did you decide to go there? Okay, so the full name um, is actually American University of Antigua. Okay. Um, um, it's located in Antigua. I heard about AUA when I was trying to go to medical schools. I started doing a bunch of research and they had an open house in Toronto. Um, nice. Yeah, where a bunch of medical schools gather and stuff and you can yeah. go ask them questions. Yeah. So I, I saw the school and I was like, oh, you know, seems like a nice school. <laughs> yeah, so when I was trying to apply, you know, that was my first choice. Okay. Yeah. So did you hear about other schools or was it just AUA you heard about? I did. I, I was able to talk to some people there, like some of the representatives from the other schools there. I talked to them and um, honestly, the ones that really stood out to me were St. George's, um, UMHS, AUA, and um, I think it was SABA. But yeah, I had some friends at SABA. Okay. So. They were like, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was out of my list. So it was just left with the three. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Good. All right. So um, what are some of the entry requirements for getting into AUA? What can someone who wants to go to AUA, what can they expect to have before they can be you know, admitted to AUA? Okay, so it depends on um, what stage the person is coming from. If you're coming um, from university, then of course you have to have a university degree, right? The bachelor's degree. Um, and you have to have um, the entry requirements would be general chemistry one and two, organic chemistry one and two, um, physics, English. Um, I think you can substitute calculus or stats so either one of the above and um i know that the minimum there was a minimum gpa but um they don't really consider it as much okay yeah okay so any um mcat requirements yeah so for um canadian students and international students you don't have to have an mcat okay. um but for u.s citizens and permanent residents you have to have an mcat and the score should be 505 and above um 500 but, 505 yeah 505 505 and above yeah wow okay yeah but like they don't consider it as much 
Okay, so okay. usually it's like it's just like a formality. It's like people just need to have it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. So those are the entry requirements. Um, what about tuition fees? What can someone who wants to go to pay you expect to pay? Okay. So the tuition fees are a bit brutal. Um, in Canadian dollars is a lot, but in USD, um, when I first entered into the school, it was about nineteen thousand six hundred and USD. Hundred US dollars per semester. Yes, per semester. Um, but now, um, I was just checking today, and I saw that they've increased it to about twenty three thousand six hundred US oh, per semester. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of Canadian dollars, that's you know goes be- all the way up. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Good. Uh, probably some Canadian listeners that you know that would be beneficial for them as well too. So now let's talk about curriculum, right? So what's what's like the curriculum like? So talk to us about the curriculum in terms of how many semesters is the basic science, mm-hmm. and you know what kind of um, approach you guys take to learning. So is it like um, system based or is it like organ system based? So just talk to us a little bit about those. All right, so um, the we have um, AU as a whole is 4.5 years, uh, which is a lot compared to other Caribbean schools. Yeah, um, 2.5 years. At AUA, they have a very unique curriculum, right? Yeah, so talk to us about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So it's 2.5 years on the island, right? Okay. And about two years during clinicals. And um, so there's a global health track, which they do with FIE, uh, Florida State, uh, Florida International University. Um, and so there's a joint program with Global MD. So you could get a last year they started a public health master's you could actually get a master's in public health so when i first applied that was actually how i you know i was interested in the master's in public health um they've you know they've they've made it really good now but at at the time it wasn't as good um yeah but it's the program is very holistic like you get a lot of people that come um at the beginning of the semester i know that global health students we have to be there about three weeks before or two weeks and then um you just get a bunch of um, doctors from the states that have done a bunch of research um into global health like things like that affect us as a whole pandemics you know covid 19 for example yeah so they come and talk about they talk about their research and things then you know you can ask questions and the, um i really enjoyed that aspect of it because you could also build connections with you know those doctors right and they could um put you in the right direction in terms of research right yeah so that's the global health track um that you do with AUA. So yeah, so it starts like that. And then um, the rest of the students that are not in global health, everybody starts med one at the same time. So after the three weeks um, that global health students have to be there or two weeks, um, after that, then there's like a week's break and then all the med ones come in. And um, for med one, you know, it's the basic stuff like anatomy, physiology, um, embryology, what else, neuro and yeah. stuff, yeah. So, yeah, before your class one, um, we take the comprehensive exam. Um, um, I don't even know the full meaning of CAS, to be honest, um, but we, it's basically an exam from um, the States, like we get it from the MBME. So all the MBME exams or um, divides or something. Yeah. yeah, so we get we get the questions from them. The school sends them a bunch of topics that they test us on and MBME sends them questions based on those topics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they go based on the learning objectives. The learning objectives, you get them at the beginning of the semester, depending on the semester that you're in. And it just shows you the questions that are going to be tested on in the exam. And um, yeah, so um, they give you a crash course with everything, anatomy and the whole lot, right? Um, And then after, one of the things that I kind of like about AUA is the small group sessions, because after you're taught in class, then we have small groups. Um, So in a class of about 200 or 300 students, they divide us into 10 groups of 20 students. And we have facilitators like, 
teachers or professors that actually facilitate the small group. And so during that small group, we're going to discuss all the subjects that we learn um, during lectures or the more important ones. Okay. Right. Just so that students can understand, and then we do questions on them within yeah. the small group. Yeah, session. So small groups are mandatory, um, which can get a little bit annoying, but it's helpful because it keeps you on your toes, right? Um, because you don't want to go unprepared. Um, yeah. So that's in terms of um, med one. So for semester two, um, the diving to um, the systems. So neuro, we do neuro, we do um, cardio, we do rest, we do renal and endocrine. So um, they cover all the systems and they're covering obviously the physiology, the anatomy, the embryology of everything. It's a system at that point in time, yeah. it's a system-based curriculum. After exactly. Two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, um, but pre-med three, and uh, sorry, semester three and four, um, we're covering basically the same things that we covered um, in semester one and semester two. So for, um, pre -med, for med, uh, med three, they teach us um, microbiology, pharmacology, um, all the basics of all those things. You guys weren't taught this in like semester two with the other systems? No, like it's like it, they go into details, but not 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 a lot of details that they can test you on. Okay. So microbiology and all that we do it right. in med three. So for example, in your med two, when you are learning like your cardiology, for example, mm -hmm. respiratory system, mm -hmm. are you learning there? So you're not you're not learning the pharmacology at that point in time. You are going to learn that when you get to semester three. So what exactly. is that you're learning in semester two? Is it just the pathology and the physiology and the anatomy? In semester two, we're just learning, um, you know, obviously the systems kind of interconnect. So like you probably learn about heart diseases in yeah. semester two, but yeah. when they're testing us, they test us based on the physiology of it. Yeah. Yeah. So if they're asking us a question about um, cardiomyopathy, like they're not going to ask us um, the pathology of it. They'll ask us more pathophys. Okay. Or towards the physiology aspect. Okay. So it's just anatomy, embryology, physiology. Okay. Mainly. Yeah. So when you get to um, semester three, that's when you start looking at um, like the pharmacology. Pharmacology, microbiology, and pathology heavy. Yeah. And that goes into semester three and four? Exactly. Okay. So, and do you guys have a fifth semester? Yes, okay, so BSEC, which is a basic science intercession. So BSEC is like they're tying everything in. So you can actually come out in med four up until this year. This year they started making semester five compulsory. What? What does come out mean? I know obviously I know what it means, but <laughs> I don't know what I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, so um compound is actually Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. So you can actually um, take the comprehensive basic science exam at the end of semester four. And um, if you achieve a grade of 72%, which is um, a 208, 208 in terms of AUA um, translation. Yeah, if you get that, then you don't have to do semester five, which is BSEC, right? You just go ahead and take step one. But last year they made it compulsory to start taking um, semester five and so in semester five we basically get um, teachers from the states um, so they used to use Becca but they don't use Becca anymore okay. um, so they'll get like Becca lecturers and come they will teach us um, they'll go through all the systems because now they're tying everything in so it's really really integrated because it's coming together like you finally understand everything right so they're just basically teaching you how to answer yes how many questions and breaking down um the systems on the degree that we're going to get tested on yeah yeah so that's really really what semester five is it's like a crash course it's okay. kind of rushed a little bit but um if you're studying by yourself honestly speaking all right yeah that, that's that's interesting, and I we spent a lot of time on this because I know like AUA's curriculum is, is 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 sort of different than most schools, right? So let yeah. me summarize what I heard, and you know you can correct me where where I'm wrong. 
And um, so he said that um, when a new student is coming in and starting, there's an opportunity for them to go through the, um, the global health track, you said, mm-hmm. and that yes. for three weeks. Yeah, for about two to three weeks, yeah. Right. So when they are done that global health track, they now start med one with the rest mm-hmm. of the events that did not take the global health track. Exactly. Yeah. So so a quick question there. So how does someone get into a global health track? Do you apply for that? What, what are some requirements for you to be able to go through the global health track or someone that wants to do that? Um, it's honestly the same requirements as getting into AUA, but I know that you have to have some kind of um, public health. Like when they interview you, you okay. have to put it in your application that you're applying for the global health um, track. Okay. And um, that application goes to a separate a separate um, committee. Okay. Um, I think they're FIU based, but it's an um, it's a committee of AUA versus FIU. And so they evaluate you based on, so for for me, for example, like I had um, public health experience, okay. right? So um, I just put that in there and um, I had to have letter of recommendations for the places that I worked in public health. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and this public health track, do that, in, you have to go to Florida to do that there before going to Antigua for Med One. Is that how it no, is? you just go straight to Antigua. We start in Florida um, in where you start clinicals. You can apply to go to Florida oh, since you're in so the, so the, the global health track is done on the island of Antigua. Yes. You just, you just come like before the rest students come. Yeah. So that's why they bring the, the teachers from the states, like the doctors and stuff. And some of them that teach at FIU come to talk to us before the semester starts. All right, good, good. All right, so everyone starts in Med 1. You guys are learning the basics in Med 1 and Med 2, right? Mm-hmm. In the anatomy, physiology, and embryology in Med 1 and Med 2. So yeah. when you get to Med 3 and Med 4, you start learning more of the pathology and the pathology yes. of the system yes. in Med 1 and mm-hmm. 2, right? Yes. And previously, you can take the comp exam in Med 4, and if you mm. pass the comp exam, you directly go and take your step one exams. But yes. right now, it's mandatory to take um, to do semester five. Yes. And you can only take the comp exam after semester five. Is that exactly. Correct? Yeah, yeah. there is an optional comp exam before semester. But I mean, what's the point? Okay. If you want to take it, you can go ahead. But you know. You are still going to have to take it again in semester five. Exactly. So why why go to the stress? <laughs> All right, that's that's good to know, and um, yeah. So you said the passing grade for the comp exam is like a seventy percent, or like maybe seventy-two. Like seventy-two, and that translates yeah. to like more than eight. Yes. Okay. So you talked a little bit about the class size, right? Mm-hmm. So you know that's the next question in this test. So you said the class could have like you could have like a class of three hundred people. Yeah. Right. But these 300 people are further broken down into a group of how many? About 20 students, 16 20. to 20 students, small group sessions, right? Okay. Yeah. So, and that's how, so is that how, we, is, are you going to stay with the same group from med, from semester one to semester five? Or does it, how does it work? Does it get changed up or how does it work? No, so actually it's semester by semester because remember, not everybody passes into the next semester, right? So they have to reshuffle based on the amount of students that are in that class. So med one, you might see some people that you were in, that were in your small group in med one, in med two, but um, it's a random process. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the, the people you get paired with, you are, you are stuck with them for the whole semester. Yeah. What if you don't like them or something happens? What what happens? Well, <laughs> that's very interesting because that actually happened to me before. But, you know, you just have to try and work with them because, you know, as future doctors, you might get paired with somebody that you don't like per se, but you have to respect the person and try as much as possible to learn, right? Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about this um, group sessions, right? Mm-hmm. You, you said, so you guys are broken down into groups and that's how you guys mm-hmm. learn. So there are not necessarily any lectures per se where like a prof is at the front of the class and teaching everyone. You guys are learning in group sessions and 
Hey guys, no, like, we have lectures, but we also have small group sessions after lectures. Okay, yeah. so I'll give you like an example of our schedule. So um, classes are from say eight to ten, right? On um, Monday, med ones and twos. How they usually do it soon. Med ones and threes will have classes eight to twelve, and med twos and fours will have classes one to five, something like that. Yeah, and so med ones and threes after their lectures they have a two hour small group session okay but not every day of the week but more so in med one you have a lot more small group sessions because they really want to make sure you get the basics yeah yeah so um you probably have it every day okay and sometimes the small group session is first thing in the morning and um they're going to be going over the lectures from yesterday uh -huh. But now when you're going through them, you're going through them in terms of cases. So they bring a case, um, like almost like a USMLE style based question, right? And they're asked, they're breaking down the case saying, giving you all the pertinent um, things that you should look out for in the question. And so you're really breaking it down to the T in the small group sessions. Yeah, but we still have lectures. Okay, and the profs are facilitating these small group sessions. Yes. Okay, so these small group sessions, are they great? Do, do any grades come out of them at all? No, so um, you just get um, evaluated on professionalism and yeah. things, and you have to participate because it's mandatory to attend and it's also mandatory to participate. Granted, there are still some students that go there and sit down or whatnot, but <laughs> yeah, it's mandatory to attend. That's interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay. This small group sessions is all through the semesters, not just med one and med two. You have it all through the semesters. Four, I see. Okay. Yeah, but med five though, we don't have small group sessions. We just have mandatory classes in med five. Okay. Um, so just talk to us briefly. What's housing on the island like? So first of all, how do how does a student go about seeking for housing? Do you guys have some housing department or do the students have to look for those themselves? And also, what are the houses like? Prices and stuff. So just talk to us briefly about what housing. Okay. So the housing, um, it's compulsory for every med one student to stay on residence. Residence just means the housings that are there affiliated with the school got you right so the school has their own now but before they didn't really have theirs okay. right but now they have theirs in campus so like you come out of your house and classes are right there <laughs> um don't quote me but those places are tiny <laughs> i wouldn't go there okay. i don't know <laughs> all right they're very tiny for the price because they're the prices are like 5700 you know, 4700 4, Yeah, for the entire US dollars for one Yes. Second. Yeah, for the on-campus housing. Yeah. And, um, it, and what, what, does, what does that come with, though? Is it like a bachelor, like a studio, or is it like a one-bedroom and you have your kitchen? What is, what is that guy you paying $5,700 for? <laughs> All right, so I actually I actually had it um, open here. So the housing they're divided into groups, right? Okay. Um, group one, you have a single, and the student has their own bedroom, okay. right? And um, but it's a two bedroom apartment because there are some bedrooms where students share, right? If you want, like you can also attach like a link for them to go look at the housing. Yeah. They really break it down on the page. Okay, cool. All right, so they can just check the website for more details on that. But the, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, so but, but the key here is that you said that it is mandatory to stay in one of these residences in your first semester, right? Yes. All right, then after your first semester, then you can decide, can you, can you decide to keep staying there or do you have to leave? Yeah, okay, so um, there's a clause to that mandatory staying in first semester if you're to if you're like older like 40 something mm -hmm. um they look at it's on a case by case basis they they will not let make you stay on campus with you know people that are way younger right so um as long as you can find housing on the island um there are real estate agents that help people find housing so as long as you can find those you don't have to stay 
So it's basically case by case, depending on how old you are. I know um, age is a big factor, and obviously the spouse too is a big factor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So for those people, they're in a separate category. Except if you choose to, they they're not going to force those set of people to stay with on campus housing in their med ones. Yeah. And then for people that have family on the island, so if you have family on the island. Um, you can just indicate it there and they're not going to force you yeah. to stay. Yeah. And so after you're med one, um, you can reapply to stay again for med two, but um, med two students have a separate space that they stay. They can let you remain in where you are, but uh, it's 50 50 if you're going to get approved or not because they're trying to cater to the med one students. All right. Okay. Yeah. So for people who want to live outside of these residences on campus, they can just go to the real estate agents to find Yeah, but only if they give you permission, so. How, how do you mean, if they give you permission? So remember I said there's a clause of people, right? Because it's mandatory for your med one to stay yeah, on yeah. campus. Yeah, so I'm saying after the med one. So like after med one, you're now in med two. And okay, you yeah, yeah. Look for housing outside these residences from med two on, mm -hmm. you, you use the real estate agents and that's how you- Yes. Okay. Yes, there are a few of them that have really good and they put their posters up in the school all the time. And also, if you know students on the island, I stayed at Lord Nelson, which was um, a lot closer to the school. Um, but it's pricey for most people, which is just comfortable. I just wanted to be comfortable. Yeah, so depending on what you're looking for and, you know, if you're trying to rent a car or not, you factor that into the kind of place you're going to get. Yeah. All right, got you. Let's talk about safety. How do you say how safe do you say the island is? Have you witnessed any shootings or stabbings or anything? No, actually, the I was very, I was a little bit apprehensive when I was going to the island. I was like, oh my god, you know. I was thinking that I was just going to see people just smoking weed on the island, like you know, every corner I turned to. But no, um, it's pretty safe. Um, I didn't have any incidents. Oh, obviously, don't casually be walking around at 4 a.m. Okay. Right? So, yeah, apart from the obvious things that you shouldn't do, yeah. um, it's pretty safe. Okay. Um, if you're studying, but I mean, of course, it's always good to move in groups to be safe. But if you're studying on campus, um, we do have like a security and we have like a gated area. So it's pretty safe on campus. Um, even if you want to study all nights or whatever, is there are security men all over. Yeah. All right, cool. Cool. First of all, do you guys have a cafeteria on campus? If yes, what are the options there like and stuff like that? Then outside of campus, what kind of other options do students have for feeding, you know, and like groceries, you know, just on the island itself? So just talk to us a little bit more about that. All right, so there are three major places that people shop from for groceries. Um, there's Epicurean Foods, um, there is First Choice, and then there is Cospro. Um, so Epicurean is very expensive, but because they bring their stuff directly from the States, right? And so you can find anything you're looking for there. It's just that something that you're going to get for $100 in the States is 300 EC, like um, Caribbean dollars which is when you convert, it's probably like, you know, a, an extra hundred dollars more or something, right? So Epicurean, um, if you just want one place to shop from without having to go to different places, yes, go to Epicurean, especially if you have the money to spare, right? Because they have everything you need. Um, first choice is good price and um, it's comparable to EP. It's just that maybe depending on the time you go, they probably won't have something in stock, right? But um, usually first choice is most students um, go to because it's cheap, right? Um, Cosper on the other hand now is 24 hours, right? My go-to because it's very cheap. Um, and um, yeah, sometimes they don't have a couple of things, but then for those things, I just go to Epi, um, Epicurean. That's the short form, Epi, to get them. Um, there's also a market that students go to on the weekends. Um, the market is open every time, but you know, like, you know, that the, the big open markets kind of thing. 
yeah so they have that um downtown and you can go there and shop for i usually go there for meat so something you're gonna get um at ep for 40 dollars you get it there for 15. so if you have a car or if you have somebody to take you on the weekends you can go to the markets very early in the morning because that's when you get good stuff um so that's in terms of grocery shopping how well would you say AUA prepares their students to take the U.S. Step one exam. Let's talk to us about how well do you think. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they don't prepare their well. You can see that. All right. Just tell us briefly how well they do that. So I'm just gonna throw a disclaimer in here. AUA is a pretty um more difficult than your average Caribbean medical school. Okay. So it's one of those things that if you're a student that needs somebody to take your hand through, then AUA is probably not for you. Okay. If you're a student that's able to adapt and study by yourself, even with the lectures and the small group sessions, then AUA is for you. Okay. Because um, a lot of the so for the semester one topics for example right the anatomy and stuff um i find that a lot of some of them were lacking some of the lectures were very lacking um but i used other resources and i did pretty well um so obviously don't carry the big first aid in your in your semester one you really don't need that um but i used first aid organ systems in semester one and it helped um so I would say that in terms of preparation, 75%. Okay. 75% for, you know, making sure you get the material. Yeah. But you really still have to go back on your own and refresh and everything. Okay. Yeah. But then the exams help in terms of overall pre uh, preparation for step one. Because remember, like I said, our exams are MBME exams. Yeah. So retired MBME and stuff like that. So um, the exams really help in terms of those. We don't get in-house exams only during formatives. Okay, good. Well, it's good you're, you're saying that now. And um, so that's the next question, actually. You know, so mm -hmm. what are the exams like? And basically, how are students evaluated? Okay, so the MBME exams. So we get two exams, yeah. right? Um, two major exams and um, a final exam. So three exams, three graded exams in total. But we have formatives, and what formatives are, are basically in-house exams that the lecturers themselves that are teaching us. So if you learn physiology, the physiology lecturer himself is going to set a physiology question, mm -hmm. right? So we get those formatives after every system that we're done learning. Okay. Um, and um, if the system is a lot like cardio, you get two formative exams. Formatives are mandatory and they are also graded, but they do not contribute to your final grade. Okay. So they do not affect your grading total. So, you know, people just flunk that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but if you take it seriously, yeah. it can really be a good tool for you to evaluate if you're following the lectures correctly and yeah. if you really understand the material. <laughs> and there's actually, I hate to believe, but they used to tell us this a lot and it's true, um, even though I hate to agree with them. There's a correlation between people that do well on formatives and people that do well on the CAS exams that we get from the States, yeah. from MBME, right? Yeah. So we'll have like probably like two formatives before our first cast and like three more formatives before our next cast and then a final exam, right? And so um, if you take the formatives seriously, you can, I, I think you'll be able to do well, although the formatives are hard, but if you really, really study, um, you should be able to do well in them and also in the cast exams. Okay. But the formatives are from the professor and the CAS exams we get from MBME. And those are the only ones that are graded and contribute to our final grade. See. So in, in, in a particular semester, for example, right? So let's say you guys are taking cardiology in mm -hmm. medicine, for example, and you're learning the anatomy, physiology, and embryology for cardiology. So mm -hmm. you get a cardiology, NBME, 
NBME exam at the end of the semester? Is that how, how it works or is it a combination? Yeah, you get everything. Yeah, you get a combination. So all the systems that you did, right? Okay. Yeah, so and you get a combination of all of them. Okay. And do you say it was two NBME exams you guys had or was it just one? It was three. So, um, yeah, okay. CAS 1, CAS 2, and CAS 3. Some semesters we have just two, but um, ideally they should give us three. And I think they started giving three exams. So, yeah. how so what's the weightage? So, does that mean that so when you have the, the two NBMEs, it's like one is 50% and the other one is like 50%, and you just put uh, it okay, it would be like one is 50%, one is 43 or 42 point something because um, our labs, our ICM, which is um, yeah, okay, I forget the name. yeah, so that one's about 7.5%. So yeah so we do usually we have three exams i think it's just once that we had the two exams and it was because of the pandemic yeah right but that is that is the old system the new system how they started doing it um they call it um curriculum based or whatever they call it um anyways so the new the new system um med one and med two is combined so you do 50 percent in med one and 50 percent in med two okay right so basically you know, like your exam so like after 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 med one you take an exam after med one but you go to med two and you take another exam and when you're done these two exams that's when you get like a final grade is that what, what you yes so how they started doing it um two years ago or so so how they started doing it is that um med one as a whole is 50 percent and med two as a whole is 50 percent so um if you if you take your exams in med one you'll find all those exams come to 47 percent 47 point something right and then your med two comes to 50 53 or whatnot right so um they would then um, divide it 20%, 20% or 10, right? However, they divide it, right? And then your semester two is also divided. So when you finish those exams and say your end of um, semester one average is uh, 70, so you get to go on to med two. And based on what you get in med two, they, they combined both averages and give you your final year one um, grade. See, okay, yeah, is, is it the passing grade is 70 percent? Yes, the passing grade is 70 percent. All right, cool. So, in med one, when you take that first exam, mm -hmm. you get up to 70 percent. What happens? Well, nothing is gonna happen to you, you're just gonna have to try harder for the next two exams because, um, at the end of your med one, you really have to get those 47.5 percent, like, you really have to get um a lot to help in your med too so um i had a mentor when i was coming into med one and she told me the best thing is to stay above a 75 percent in your med one and um, because if you fail an exam they're not going to kick you out or anything you still get to you know take your second and your third exam right but you have to do better in them and so that first med one exam which we call cas one in your med one is really the easiest but also the most important um exam because after that you know the information builds up and it just gets harder for you right so you really want to get a lot of percentage like at least a 78 or let's just say 75 you know med your cast one so that your cast two you're not struggling because that's when they started integrating the embryology and the um, physiology and everything with the systems remember that's when you start cardio and stuff right so um you really want to try and get those in early right See. and then when you go into your med two you know i mean med two is always harder than med one All right so just a quick summary of what i'm understanding and let me know if i'm right or wrong mm -hmm. so in med one you guys take this your first cast exam that's what mm -hmm. you call it and you know let's say for example you don't do very well you do poorly or you fail mm -hmm. yeah you don't go into med they will still let you go into med too right no, you still you still get like i said you have three exams in med one and huh? three exams in med two 
those your three exams in advance are divided into um, the 47.5 percentage. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So what I'm asking is, after those three exams in med one, and mm-hmm. it's, you don't do very well, you fail all three exams in med one. I <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm asking, right? I know, I know, I know the conversation is a little bit weird because of how you guys structure is, right? Yeah. You know, in, in a regular mm-hmm. school, for example, now I'm going to ask, okay, if you fail your, your your final exam, so at the end of the semester you are failed, right? So I just want, oh. I, just, I just want students to okay. know what happens to them. If I tell you med one, I tell you three exams you have failed, you know what happens? Do you, do you let you move to med two and? still takes into say it's more more so like a continuation type thing exactly it let you move on to med two or you have to repeat those three okay so there's a clause for yeah. that mm-hmm. um so if you're above 65 percentage but you're not exactly at 70 right they will let you move on okay but at that point it becomes up to you if you want to repeat um semester one or not Okay. Right. <laughs> Which a lot of students don't go for and it always ends up hurting them. Um, but if you're below 65, they will tell you to repeat. Okay. But you could still appeal to move on. Yes. However, it's not guaranteed that they're going to let you move on, right? Yeah. Um, depending on, you know, like your track record. But most likely they'll let you they'll let you move on and um what happens is that honestly those students end up failing med two because med two is harder than med one yeah so if you already have like a 16 med two a med one it's kind of advisable to repeat med one yeah. right instead of moving ahead to med two because when you get to med two and you fail med two you have to repeat the entire year now you have to start again from med one see which is one of the cons of AUA, I think. Yeah. So let's let's say, for example, you you pass med one, you get mm-hmm. get good grades, you get like above the sixty five or even a seventy. Mm-hmm. You get to med two, mm-hmm. and you feel just med two, right? You have to you have to start from med one again. Is that is that what you're saying, or you have to just take? So, what what does that mean? If, if you fail just med two, remember it's still a combination of your average, right? So if your if your average from med one is like a seventy five and your average from med two is a seventy, okay. they're going to calculate that and you most likely end up passing to med three. However, if your average from med one is a seventy five and let's just say your average from med two is a thirty, yeah. So you have <laughs> you have fifteen total or something like that, right? Um, you most likely be asked to repeat wow. for sure. All right. So you're saying that if I end of your um med two for example and uh, so when they add all the grades together and you fail right you have to mm-hmm. semester and you're still paying the same tuition fees for it yes you're mm-hmm. still paying so in a nutshell don't repeat i see so what if for example for any reason you still don't pass everything the second time did they like kick you out or do you just keep repeating what how does that work there's a, I think it's twice, um, and even the second time, it really is a case by case basis. Okay. Um, I think it's twice for the amount of time they let you repeat, um, one semester, not like obviously throughout your your five semesters, you can repeat every semester if you want. Yeah, they don't care, right? That's on you. But um, for a particular semester, if you re- repeat med one, if you fail med one the first time, you get a chance to retake it. The second time if you fail it the second time now um you have to appeal to the committee and it really is a case-by-case basis to yeah. decide if they're going to let you go and your small group evaluation actually plays into that so <laughs> take small group seriously so it plays into whether they let you move on or not right um but um if you fail it twice in a row for example you most likely be dismissed Okay. Um, yeah, but um, sometimes they let you repeat just med two, and they let you repeat just med two. For example, like a particular semester, like your second half. So if we're using med three and med four, med three and med four is also joined. So if if you pass med three a lot, but you feel med four, um, and your average is like a sixty five or whatnot, they'll let you repeats only med for instead of starting afresh mm. but if your average is too low they'll most likely tell you to do it do the entire year mm. so for the people that their averages are below 65 
you know, it's usually you have to repeat the entire year, right? Um, but for the people that the average is above, you know, it's a case by case basis. Yeah depending on what they see. But there is, um, we have a student hand that really breaks everything down. Um, and if you want, I can also like put the link there um, okay. after the call so that you guys can see it and stuff, yeah. Right. Cool, cool, that's very interesting. AUA, from, from what I'm getting so far, is like let's have different clauses here and there about different Yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right, so the next question here is um, exit exam which you already talk, talked about. So you said you guys mm -hmm. have a comprehensive um, exam in mm -hmm. fifth semester. And yeah. you need to get like a 72% to pass. Yeah. Wait. So if, if, you, if you do not pass this exam, um, what happens? You have to wait. When do you have to take it next again? So um, for MBMA exams, you know, you can retake them every eight weeks. Um, so the school will have to, you have, you have to appeal again and the school have to give you permission to retake the comp exam. But when you're retaking it, you have to pay by yourself, which is like a 150 USD. Oh, I see. Yeah, and you have to retake it at a prometric center. Oh, wow. However, there's a clause. <laughs> Tell us. All right. <laughs> so for people that, um, if you passed Med 5 as a whole, right? Remember, Med 5 is not connected to any of the other semesters. It's just a, you know, review semester. So if you pass Med 5, um, and um, how they did it for us last semester was that um, our final um, comprehensive exam was 50% and our med five exams, which were two, were 50%. So, what are those two other exams in med five? The CAS. So, even though they are reviewing for us, they are still giving us. Ah, please. Wow. Yes, exactly. So, because they want to make sure that they are not spending their hard end dollar, yeah. you know, just teaching you every day. And um, so, we still get evaluated. And if you pass that, those two sub, um, those two um, exams, yeah. and you fail the final comprehensive exam, they'll give you a chance to retake it. Okay. Up to I think about um, depending on your average, though. Depending on your average, so if you're above a seventy-five, um, you can retake it, but you don't have to, you know, retake it on the island. So you can retake it with the med fours. But seeing as um, last semester, uh, because of the pandemic, they changed it so that there is no more comp for med four, right? Now you can just go to a prometric center, pay the 150 and retake that. I see. Yeah, so that's what happens. But if you fail the two exams and you fail the comprehensive exam, so in a nutshell, your overall average is below 70, mm -hmm. case by case basis again. They're most likely not going to let you, but if you appeal, you never know. I see, okay, wow. So talk to us about your likes and dislikes about AUA, you know. So tell us about the things you like, if any, and, you know, tell us about <laughs> things. <laughs> if any! <laughs> you know, uh, tell us about the things you do not like as well. So, yeah. Okay, all right. I mean, I, I think I've told you before, the major thing, major thing I do not like is the amount of time each semester is. Because I have friends in other medical schools that started like just last year and they're done. Yeah. But because AU is 4.5 years, um, each semester is technically almost five months. So we start at the end of January and we go up to um, like June, the beginning first week of june probably like the first or second and then we get to a six weeks holiday mm -hmm. right but in my in my opinion honestly speaking i would prefer if they just cut down that six weeks holiday to three weeks yeah. and make our semester shorter yeah. but they can't do that because the global health track goes with fiu i see so that's actually the major reason why the semesters are that long yeah yeah, but that's, I didn't know how important the timing was for me until like I was already well into the system. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I would advise everybody trying to come to AUA, like consider the timing, like, you know, if that's a big factor for you, because students can get burned out, right? Like being in school for that long. If you know that you can't stay in school for almost five months per semester, then you're better off going to a different medical school that's three months per semester. Right. So for me, that's like the major con, like 80% con. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
and the rest is just um i didn't really have any difficulties per se in school so um i think that's probably the only thing um yeah i think that's probably the only thing like i said before the school is not as oh actually have a different con we okay. get only eight weeks to study for step yes yes um, I mentioned that yes meanwhile other schools get like five months or so you know so that's another thing to consider but i don't know if they give us that little time because throughout the school they're teaching us like they're basically giving us a sample of how the mbma exams are yeah so i don't know if that's why that's a factor yeah because we get MBMA exams, yeah. so and your med five gets all these teachers from wherever, yeah. So yeah, so I think it's it just depends on the person. For me, those those were the two things that I really didn't like, but everything else was okay as long as she study. Honestly speaking, the school is hard, but as long as she study, I think you should be fine. Okay, and um, yeah. So um, what about likes? What, what? What, are there any like specific things you really like? Yes, I really like this about AUA. Are there any other? Okay. Um, specific things, the class exams. The class exams, I don't know what I'll do if we were getting in-house exams as our actual exams <laughs> because <laughs> I just feel like, you know, <laughs> even the formative exams, sometimes when I look at them, I'm like, what is he asking? So the formative exams are harder than the cast exams yeah because the formative exams are from from the lecturers right yeah. so they ask you the tiniest of yeah. details yeah. Do, do you think is that high because probably it's not graded or something do, do you think if it was actually if actually counted they will make it maybe easier or it's just gonna be that it's just hard because it was hard not necessarily because it counts what do you, what do you think about difficulty the formative exam? um i think the difficulty is based on um I think it's based on the teacher's perception. Like some of the teachers, they overestimate the things that are actually important yeah. for us to know in the long run versus the things that are not. Um, I know that we complained and they started trying to uh, make it similar to CAS, to the CAS exams a lot. And those ones actually started, like you do the formative and you'd be like, oh, oh this is actually reasonable, okay. right? But sometimes, you know, like if you're teaching me about EKG, don't put like, 12 EKG questions on the exam. Like, I'm not trying to be a whatever it is, right? I'm trying. <laughs> That's just my, my thing. But um, after some time, the, the formative exams, they were fair after we, you know, we ex express our concerns. So they started being fair. But I really do not like the formative exam. Okay. I use them as a tool to make sure I have covered all the material. Okay. Um, so for me, that was one of the likes. Okay. Using it as a tool to make sure you've covered all the material before the exam. Because if you're not getting tested for CAS, before CAS, you know, you, you think sometimes you can slack if you don't take too, too sure. much, you know, care. So, yeah, so that's why. Um, so that's one of the things that I like. Second thing I like exactly, like I said, was the CAS exam because it's similar to MBME. Um, what is the other thing I like? Um, I like the FIU track. I like the, the Google Health MD track. Um, so I think it's a very good thing to do if anybody can, because even on the island, you can, um, we get to associate like with the, the care projects, like um, the orphanage homes there or the care homes. Yeah. So I think that was really good experience too. Yeah. yeah. So the final question, you know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit related to this one we just talked about. The final question is, mm -hmm. uh, if there was one thing you could change about your school, what, what would that be? Lock down the semester time to three months. Okay. <laughs> um, that would be it. And um, I don't know. I know that there are a lot of students that have difficulty. Like, I, I stumbled a little bit um here and there but i never had to repeat but um a lot of students at aua tend to have difficulties um and um i think if there was one thing that i could change apart from the timing it would be to just separate the semesters okay that whole one year re repetition thing i think it's dumb okay. right because you know that's like a whole 40 something thousand you have to pay again 
Yeah. Right, which is a lot. Um, so I think if I were AU, I'll just separate, keep the the curriculum. Oh, that's what they call it, curriculum next. Yeah, keep the same curriculum, but you know, separate the semester so that students have a fair chance. Yeah. Right. To and then create more exams because, like you even noted earlier, like the exams are weighted heavily, right? Um. So you know, I think this will be good to All right. Right, so thank you very much, Anita, for spending time with me today and answering all our questions. Thank you for having me. We are not leaving them more confused than they started. Uh, I know, because... Just in case they are, how can they reach out to you if they have any questions, you know, to ask? Um, Email address, if you want. If you have any social media you want to plug in, whatever one, they can reach you that you feel comfortable uh, for them reaching you by. Yeah, so my um, you can you can put my Instagram handle there, and so they can add me up. Um, yeah, you can also email me. I will also leave my email address. Um, but um, also just tell us these things now. So oh, I oh, I, I should just say it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. my email address is um Anita. So it's A N I T A O. Yeah at um auamed.net so a u a m e d dot net and my instagram handle is um i a m c u z i <laughs> so i am cozy <laughs> uh, so yeah <laughs> so you can just add me up or whatnot and um you can should be some questions um also like the school's website is auamed.org it has a lot of the things that we talked about yeah. in much detail um and um, um if you want to you can also leave a link that they can explore below or you can just search it up on google auamed.org and then go tr- go to admissions and when you go to admissions you're going to see um the housing and all that like the, the entry requirements and things like that. But if anybody needs the student handbook, that one I don't know if you find on the website, I forget. Um, but if anyone needs the student handbook, then just um, send me an email or a DM and I'll send that to you. Right. Okay. All right. So thank you very much again for joining us today. Um, good luck with your step one examinations. I'm sure you're going to keep Amen. hanging in there. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. end of the day. so thank you very much. You know, and you know, we'll chat again hopefully some other time. All right, sure. Thank you for having me, guys. Bye.